Hi boys and girls, Mr. Poole here. Today we're going to work with fractions and specifically the kinds of problems that involve multiplying fractions. Today, fractions and whole numbers. So, while we do this, we're going to be using some important things you've learned already. We're going to use factors and multiples. You probably said, when in the world am I going to need this? They come in very handy, especially when you're dealing with fractions. We're going to be working with different kinds of models so we can understand and see why the math works. And then we're going to go do some steps because the key to math is not working hard, it's working smart. And so once we understand it, is there a quicker way, a more efficient way to solve the problem? And that's the key. So let's begin. First, we're going to start with a basic problem. Nine children are in an art class and two-thirds are girls, so how many children were girls? Now, I've already gone ahead and annotated this. I've circled the important amounts and relationships. So nine children is one important amount, and two-thirds being girls is another important amount kind of in a relationship. I've underlined the question so we know what we have to figure out, how many children were girls. And so with that being said, the next thing we try to do is try to figure out how can we go about solving this? Can we draw a picture of anything? I'm thinking for this one, I can definitely draw my nine children. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Now I know I've got to take two thirds of them. I think two thirds of these are girls. And thirds, what do thirds mean? That means I'm breaking things up into equal parts, three equal parts. Is there a way I can divide nine children or nine people up into three equal parts? And that's where factors and multiples come in. Three is a factor of nine because three times three equals nine. And so if I make groups of three, one, two, three equal groups, that's thirds. Each of these is a third. And two thirds would be two of these groups. So that would be six girls. Okay. Nine kids divided into three equal groups. That would be three groups of three. And two of those groups would make six, would use six of the girls. Another way we might do it is with a number line. I'll start with zero, I'll end at nine. Five should be a little more than halfway. Six, seven, eight. It's not gonna be exact, but it's just a model. Three, two, and one, okay? But really, it's the same kind of thinking. I've got nine spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine spaces. Think of it as nine hops on the number line. How can I break that into three equal groups? Again, it would be three groups of three. So if I start at zero and I make three, that's three, one third, two thirds, two thirds takes me to six, right back to where I was before, six girls. That seems to work. Is there another way? For this problem, these two ways probably work best, but there is another way I could use with a drawing. And I'll start with my nine people again. Six, seven, eight, nine. Now, in this case, we're gonna break everything into thirds, because thirds is the number of equal parts we need. So, break each one of these up into thirds and I'm going to do it by making like an upside down Y or a P symbol and it doesn't need to be exact it's just a model 
just a model. Okay. And I want two thirds, I want two out of every three. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Wait a minute. How can there be eighteen girls if there's only nine children? Well, it's not eighteen girls. It's 18, what? No, we divided these, each, each of these represents a third. So it's 18 thirds. So, that's the same as how much? What is that equal to? Well, there are a couple of ways to do it, but think. If one hole has three thirds, two holes would have six, three holes would have nine, Four holes would have 12, five holes would have 15, six holes would have 18. And there it is, six holes again. Matches the answer from before. So all those ways work. Is there another way? Yes, there is. And let's see if it works. We're gonna take a look at our problem and we're working with a group of nine. And we want two thirds. We want to know what two thirds of that group is. We don't know that yet. Well, in math, you can start to associate two thirds of nine as two thirds times nine. Now, a great rule to use when multiplying with fractions is make everything a fraction. So I'm going to use 2 thirds times, and changing 9, the easiest way to change 9 into a fraction is 9 holes, 9 holes. And then 2 times 9 is 18, 3 times 1 is 6, and oh my goodness, 3 times 1 is 3. Uh, and we get the exact same answer as we did here. So it works. Now the nice thing about this problem is when we looked at the total number of people, nine, we were taking thirds and that was a factor of nine. What about a problem like this where it's not quite as simple? Let's see. Six pizzas were delivered to a party. One fourth of them were cheese only. So, how many pizzas were cheese only? Well, again, I've hi I've circled, I've circled the key amounts: six pizzas and relationships. One fourth of all those were cheese only. And I've underlined the problem, the question: How many pizzas were cheese only? And so I have to ask myself. Oh, can I draw this? Well, I can draw six pizzas. But there's no way to divide those up into four equal groups. Because four is not a factor of six. There's just no way. So I'm not going to be able to use sets. Uh, I'm going to run into the same problem. You can't use sets. You can't use number lines. So I may have to revert back to my area drawing. And so I'll keep my six. These are my six pizzas. And one fourth of them were cheese only. So I need things dotted into fourths. And one fourth of them were cheese only. So. One fourth, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, and one fourth. Now wait, that's six. How, if there were six pizzas and only a fraction of them were cheese only, how can all six be? Again, just like in the other problem, 
We have six, but what do those six represent? Fourths. Because each one of these is one fourth. And how much is that? Well, I know four fourths is one whole, and that leaves two more fourths. So one and two fourths, or one and one half, were cheese pizzas. How about the algorithm? How could we do this just with the math? Well, let's look back. Six are delivered and one fourth of them. So six is the loop we're talking about, taking a portion of. We want one fourth of two six, but that's going to be the same as one fourth times six. It will give us the math answer. Keep everything as a fraction. One fourth times, and we're going to make six as six over one. And then again, we're going to multiply. What is one times six? Six. What is four times one? Four. And we get the same answer as we did over right here, which we can also say is the same as one and two fourths. So, when you're working with fractions and you need to find a fractional group of a whole, you can try drawings. Drawings are fine. Sometimes certain drawings work better than others, certain models. Sets, number lines, area models. You may have thought of one of your own. The math algorithm that solves it is what we just practiced. What's being, what's the set or the number that you're taking a part of? Of six, of nine, and what fraction of it? Turn that of into a multiplication problem, use all fractions, multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, and you'll get your answer. So that's it for today. Next time we'll look at what happens if we're taking a piece of a piece, so a fraction of a fraction. Bye.